Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a rating your doomstack disaster battle, I suppose. Playing as uh, the Exiles of Corn. we got a very simple army here of Scarbrand, a Cultist, and 18 units of Minotaurs of Corn with great weapons. So, we're going up against how many armies of Kislev? Three armies, mostly infantry, so I think the anti large is in probably the best choice there. Uh, loads of guns. Yeah, okay. Uh, Minotaurs are definitely good, but I'm wondering if maybe this is just too much. We won't know until we try it out. I mean, you guys sent it in to be raided. Let's have a look. Um, in terms of cost, uh, co upkeep cost doesn't really matter for corn. Let's just see how it goes. Jump in there and see how it goes. Because corn's real strength is not necessarily completely on the battlefield. It's it's more a case of the campaign mechanics and their ability to be super aggressive so that factions don't even get a chance to get this strong. Basically just want to rush as soon as possible. Don't let them get organized because I think that might be a bit too much. This first army here doesn't seem too much and I guess Kislev does lack a lot of anti-large in this army. We need to make sure the guns don't shoot. Alright, I tell you what would be good for this one, Vanguard deployment for the entire army. We've got Scarbrand and we should definitely make use of that. Alright, we've got two minutes until either one of those armies comes in. I doubt we'll be able to kill all this in the meantime. Uh, this guy here... Yeah, should definitely be using those summons to just keep them pinned down. Alright. And let's just see how we go. Great thing to work. So, just try to get Scarbrand to pin him down. Now, Minotaurs are not demons, so they're not naturally resistant to physical damage, but they do have 4% missile resistance, so that's something. Probably not going to be able to catch the horse archers there. Blood, wolf, and axe. Oh, okay, maybe we did. That's weird. They didn't even try to skirmish. Yeah, primary focus, go for the Blood, Father, missile units. Because melee is not a problem for corner tours. But they're definitely vulnerable to getting shot. They do have a fair bit of armor, but all those Streltsies will be a problem. Okay, not too much damage going in there to begin with. Cultist of the Blood God. Don't think we definitely need to summon them right now. Yeah, 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 get rid of those Ice Guards. Really don't want them shooting. Yeah, you guys come around over this way. Okay, it seems like it's pretty early in the campaign. He doesn't even have all of his abilities, which is fine. I serve the ex-father, cultist of the blood god. And Scarbrand's level 50. Cool. So I want all of this dead before they get here. Yes. This one here's taking some damage. Well, we were probably l the lightest attack was on the center, the strongest attacks on the flank. Okay, I need you to get rid of Katarin. Where did she go? She's over here. Don't worry about his breath attack. That's really not important. Okay, I kind of want to rush at them before they get organized and go wide. So, I need to hurry up and be done with all this. Or maybe just go for it anyway. Just go. There's barely anything left over here. Hurt barely. Just fucking go. Go, 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 go. Now, I'll save the summons for later if things start going a bit pear shaped. Push in there. Look at all those missile units. Gotta get them pinned down so they don't shoot. Prevention is not fair unless they all shoot at you. Kind of a semi-disaster battle. It did well against this first army, that's for sure. 
Okay, they're all in a nice blob over there. Go, 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 go. Push them in on themselves. Go, go, go. Scarbrand, keep trying to hunt down Cataract. Right? Considering these are anti-large, not anti-infantry, they're killing infantry. How are we going over here? Alright, let's pop this down just to keep them pinned down. Gotta stop them shooting us. Go, 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 go. Definitely taking some damage. Bouncer power is still fine. Over here, over here. If we can get all their front line pinned down, we can start sending some dudes around the flank to dish out some real damage. That's a bit of a problem over there. So let's send the Bloodthirster to keep them pinned down so they don't shoot at us. This unit over here is really badly damaged. Time for it to leave. Yeah, Minotaurs are some of my favorite monstrous infantry because they have really good animations and they're quite fast. And of course, they're absolute killing machines. Get this one out of here. You're done. Don't worry about his breath attack. Just keep them busy. Good. That works out reasonably well for us, but we don't want these Streltsies shooting us. So we need a couple of Minotaurs to come around over here, just keep them pinned down. Those are all missile units. Get in there. My savage reward. Yeah, that's all that's left of Kataran's army. Okay, this one here. Don't leave the battlefield, just, just go over there. You're, you're done. Good, I think that's Kataran done. Need to stop these missile units, especially Ice Guard, because they're bloody magical attacks. Griffin Legion will keep us pinned down. Bouncer Power still looking good, and you know we haven't taken that much damage. Do these have um, regen? No, no, we're not playing Torox. Get at these damn Ice Guard that are coming in. What are you doing? Yep, summon this right in the middle of them, whatever. Just absolute rampage. Considering it said decisive defeat, this is going really well. I guess it wasn't really a disaster battle. It just looked like one. Don't worry about them shooting us at the back. Actually, why don't you come over here and finish them off? Okay. We've pretty much bulldozed over that huge blob. Now just keep pushing forward. Oh, they just got the army losses anyway. Three armies killed in under seven minutes. That's pretty insane. This is on very hard battle difficulty as well. And the damage really isn't that bad. We'll probably recover quite a lot in the post-battle loot options. It's not that micro-intensive either. Because I don't have to cycle charge, you just have to make sure that once the unit has finished killing something that you tend to go kill something else. Close victory. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a doom stack. Yeah. Yeah, that first army there just just got rolled over. Would have liked to have killed it a bit quicker. But for three armies to go down that quickly, that is definitely doom stack worthy. I wonder if the anti-infantry would have been better, but it's also good to kill the large units um, to prioritize them because they can pin you down. So you kill them quicker, whereas the infantry ones, they can't really pin you down. If you're not fighting a favorable engagement, you can just get out of that. Got some money. 
All right, so replenishment. We can get a little bit out of it to compensate. Is that during the end turn? No, we were on the attack. Right. Now, if you had gone three points into Lightning Strike, it's too late now, we might have been able to finish off that entire army before any of them had showed up and won the battle that way. So, having a look at how you've leveled it up, obviously you put lots of points into the Minotaurs, that's fine. Um, rating this, it's very good, it is very good. There's nothing particularly special about it though, is this guy disciplined? Yeah, okay. Nothing particularly special about it, it just, it, you just recruit loads of Minotaurs. It's, okay, it isn't that early in the campaign. Yeah, he didn't even have active the Skull Throne. Which is what you should always have that active. Because that would have been good to pop that down on some of the guys that were shooting us. Damn, I didn't expect it to be that good. And it is on very hard battle difficulty. Legendary campaign. It's not overly expensive for a corn army. Like, if we have a look at their upkeep cost compared to other things, so 332, uh, if we went with Exalted Bloodletters would be cheaper. They wouldn't kill anyone near as fast. They're cheaper than Bloodthirsters. But I reckon Bloodthirsters would have taken longer to kill that army. Because Also, Bloodthirsters are better in Chaos Undivided because they need the, the healer. Um, so, Minotaurs of Corn Great Weapons or Minotaurs of Corn just regular. Let's have a look at the difference. In terms of melee stats, it's the same. It really comes down to anti-infantry or anti-large. I guess one downside to them as well is that in global, it does seem to take a little while to recruit them. Yeah, three turns in global recruitment is a fair bit. But you still need to get to that max level there, so you can knock it down another, another uh, turn. Uh, rating it. I don't know if it deserves 10 out of 10, but it's pretty bloody good. Because it wasn't also the, the strongest enemy that we went up against. We've seen stronger. Um, I feel like i got to give this like a 9.5, which I really didn't expect to give it. It was just insanely strong. It just rolled right over them. As long as you don't give the enemy a chance to set up. Yeah, it's, it is really good. I'm just thinking, is there any sort of enemy that would be a problem for this? Obviously, loads more anti-large would have been a problem. Maybe if you went up against, us, like, a Slayer spam, it would probably struggle against that. But that's not really an issue for Warhammer 3 currently. I don't know. Like, against Kislev, that was... It just absolutely destroyed it. So that was, like, 9.5 there. But I'm just unsure about whether it would do well against every other faction. Like, would it do well against Dark Elves? Uh, probably... Three armies of Dark Elves might put up more of a fight, because Dark Elves dish, dish out loads of damage. Uh, same thing with High Elves, if there was like dragons and phoenixes and stuff, that could be a problem. Um, it would probably roll over the Empire, roll over Cathay quite easily. Uh, vampire accounts probably don't stand a chance. Tomb Kings don't stand a chance. So yeah, most enemy armies would be pretty easy to beat with this. It doesn't do magic damage, so they might struggle a little bit against the other demon factions like Slanesh, Nurgle, you know, the other demon factions. Um, probably would handle Nurgle okay. Because Nurgle lacks anti-large. And because they kill so quickly, they wouldn't be able to heal fast enough. That should be very good against Nurgle. I don't know how well it would do against Cinch. Because Cinch is just a bastard to fight. But all of Cinch's stupid bullshit wouldn't really do that much damage to them. So it should do okay against Cinch. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 9.5. It's just... There's very few situations that this wouldn't be able to cope. It'd be good in sieges. They've all got siege attacker. Um, they just dished out damage super quickly, and that makes really good Doomstacks. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, if there's any army that I probably didn't think of that you think that this would struggle against. And also, it's got to be an army that you're likely to face. So saying something like, uh, it's not going to beat a Bloodthirster Doomstack, that kind of shit doesn't really fly because the AI doesn't really build Bloodthirster Doomstacks very, very rarely. Um, I mean, it could happen, but it's just rare. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.